And the Lord gave me a message to share. I'm coming out. But church, it's time this church come out. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's time we take a stand and declare that I ain't taking it anymore. <laughs> huh? Amen. That that what I was, I am no more, and who I was, I'll be no more. Amen. Amen? Amen. And and this I'm coming out mentality has to apply to many, many different aspects of our life. And the one we're going to look at today, I'm coming out of affliction, yes. sickness, yes. and disease. Hallelujah. We don't want to be there no more. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? Well, church, I want to begin today's message by stating this one really important premise. You can't occupy two places at once. Hmm? You can't be walking by faith and living in doubt, fear, and unbelief at the same time. That's right. It don't work. Friends, our mindset dictates our position. Where you are is where you think you are. Listen, the word reveals to us in Proverbs 23 and 7. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. Amen. To, to a large degree, church, we are what we think. It, it's really that simple. We think it in our heart and we act it out in our lives. It's produced in our actions. Friends, victory begins here, and so does defeat. It begins here. Amen. If you think you're unable, then you're unable. Because if you believe that you're incapable, you're incapable. You can't do it. Ha, listen, years ago, I, I ministered a phrase that the Lord gave me in a, in a service. If you can see it, you can be it. Right. Amen. And those are some of the truest words that the Lord ever gave me in a succinct little statement like that. Church, if we want to change our condition, or, or if we want to alter our situation or our circumstance, then we need to change our thinking. It's that simple. The woman with the issue of blood. This account appears in three of the Gospels. But the Gospel of Matthew provides us with a revelation that we don't see in the other two. And in Matthew 9, 20 to 22, again from the King James, it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years. Can you imagine? She was hemorrhaging for 12 years. It says, she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now listen, because these next words are the telling words. For she said within herself. If I may but touch his garment, listen, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Church, this is profound. Listen, what no doctor could accomplish was instantly achieved by her faith. She may have thought that Dr. So-and-so could heal her, and she went to every doctor so-and-so in the land. Didn't work. But she then believed. Why do I say believed? Because she said it to herself. 
Listen, you might lie to friends, you might lie to family, you might put on an act for people at work or even people in church, but you don't lie to yourself. This woman said to herself, that's what it says, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Listen, her faith drew from the well. Amen. That, it's that simple. If, if God forbid, some of, let's say one of you went out to the parking lot today, got in your car, turned the key, and got click, click, click. <clears throat> Happened to my wife and I last year. We were out in Riverhead, no less. And, and we were in that outlet, the outlets out there, and it was freezing cold. Then we get in the car, turn the key, and I got click, click, click. I said, this is really going the way here. So I called AAA. Well, let me tell you something. You don't want to call them if your like, hair's on fire. They, I'm saying, but where are these people? I couldn't start the car. It was cold. We had no heat. We're sitting there forever. So the security people in the parking lot saw us sitting there, you know, they drive around, and they came over and says, everything okay? I said, no, I got a dead battery. Oh, we'll take care of that. So what do you think they did? They took out jumper cables, and they connected their battery full of power to my battery with no power. And then when I turned the key, that key, my effort, placed the demand on their supply, Amen. and I received what I had need of Amen. to get out of that parking lot. Amen? Amen? That's right. And that's exactly what our faith does right. when we connect with Jesus. Amen. Our need is supplied by his surplus. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Listen, in, in Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 8, 45 through 48, Speaking of the same event. Who touched me, Jesus said. Everyone denied it. Was it me? Was it me? I didn't touch you. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, listen, this is from the New Living Translation. Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me. Amen. For I felt, listen, for I felt healing power go out from me. Amen. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Twelve years of bleeding, doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor, until she didn't have a dime left. And then she came to that place where there were no natural resources left. There were no natural possibilities left. But there was a Savior in front of her. Yes. Yes. Truth. Yes. Truth. Yes. So she didn't just casually think with her brain anymore. She now got a revelation in her heart. She said within herself. And he said to her, your faith has made you whole. He said, go in peace. Now this word peace, as it's used here, is the word irene. It's a cool word in the Greek. It means prosperity. It means quietness. And it means rest. What did he say to her? He said, go ahead. You can go now. And don't worry about a thing. Amen. Everything Amen. is going to be all right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. She received. Thank you, Jesus. By believing. She received what no man could give her. Amen. And Jesus replied to her, remember, someone deliberately touched me. You see, our connection to the, to the Lord has to be the result of a deliberate effort. He makes himself available, but we have to receive him. Amen. 
She said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment. And that word is so deceiving, the way it's translated. Because they could have used a lot better uh, language. To you or I, to most people, to touch is simply to touch. Just touch. But that's not what the word means. The word is haptomi in the Greek. And it means to attach oneself to. She said, if I could only attach myself to him, I'm going to be healed. I will be healed. And he said that she did it deliberately, which, listen, which means with intent. It means carefully thought out. And it means premeditated. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't a fluke. And it wasn't spur of the moment. She thought it out. She said, he's got what I lack. And if I attach myself to him, put my jumper cables on him, I'm going to get what I have need of. Yeah. And so she did. Yeah. Friends, it's this careful, deliberate attachment to Jesus that drew from his supply what was needed to meet her need. In this case, she needed healing power. Amen. And that's what Jesus said drained from him, dunamis. Miracle working power that in and of itself, just seeing it happen is a miracle. That's a, a, a neat part of the definition of that word. And it means abundance, it means strength. It means mighty, wonderful work. Oh, by faith, she received from Jesus a mighty, wonderful work. Amen. Church, Thank you, Lord. faith is a doubt extinguisher. Amen. It's a fear chaser. And it's a table turner. Amen. Are you all with me? Yeah. Friends, this miracle received by this woman with the issue of blood, this was a two-party miracle. This was something the Lord gave me. Never heard this before. A two-party miracle. It took Jesus' power to perform it, but it took her faith to receive it. Jesus had the power all along, but if she didn't connect herself expecting, she was going to get nothing. Now, there's one thing that I noticed in all three gospel accounts. I will be getting around to uncovering that. One thing I noticed in all three gospel accounts of this woman with the issue of blood, she was alone. Her faith was her faith. Yes. You know how many times people try to make you live out their faith? <laughs> or, or we try to live by their faith. She was unaccompanied by others that might pull her this way or that way. Like Job's wife telling him, curse God and die. It's a good thing you didn't listen to her. Or Job's three friends. God did this to you because you did something wrong. Listen, they had great intentions, but they were wrong. They were misinformed, and out of their misinformation, Job was almost misdirected. And it all happened through their lack of knowledge and revelation and understanding. Church, in your time of need, when afflicted or sick or diseased, we have to stand strong. We have to stand firm in faith with nothing wavering. Amen. Huh? We have to stand boldly before the throne of grace expecting of our God. Church, we have to be mindful not only of where we stand, but of who you're standing with. Amen. Listen, the word tells us that wrong company and advice 
Listen, it's all drain and no gain. Uh, it doesn't use those words. I did. Wrong company That's right. and wrong advice is all drain and no gain. That's right. It's going to just keep taking from you and it's got nothing to give you. Friends, the word is plain and it's straightforward. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 18. In the New Living Translation says this. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? You realize it can't. What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be, to be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Listen, therefore, come out from among unbelievers. Get out of there. Come out. I'm coming out. That's going to be our mindset. I'm, if you're hanging out with the wrong people, getting wrong advice, getting discouraged, having them steal your faith, having them leave you vulnerable to affliction, sickness, and disease, get out. Amen. You don't belong there. Right. Amen. You ought to be bringing light to them, not allowing them to bring darkness to you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come out from among them. And separate yourselves. Mm -hmm. Don't touch their filthy things. He says, and I'll welcome you. Every weapon, every weapon formed against the informed and the faithful yes. will fail. Mm -hmm. Every weapon will fail. Amen. That's right. I want you to say this with me. Say, I'm coming out. I'm now let's say it again. I'm coming out. We're coming out. We need to make that declaration. We're coming out of the wrong thinking that enables affliction and sickness and disease. We're coming out of the doubt and unbelief that would hold us captive. We're coming out of the acceptance of wrong doctrine. We're coming out of the surrender mindset. Don't just roll over and accept anything that comes against you. Take a stand. Amen. Don't be double-minded. A double-minded man, the word says, is unstable in all his ways. Yeah. Take a stand and say, I will not receive this Amen. because I'm God's child. And he says, I am healed by the stripes on his back. Yeah. It's, it was said in past tense. By his stripes, you were healed. And then we need to say, I'm coming in. I'm coming into a new expectancy. To a fullness of my salvation. You don't want to just be a little healed. You want to be fully healed. Uh, you don't want to be a little delivered. You want to be completely delivered. I don't want a little prosperity. I want it all. Amen. I don't want enough prosperity to pay that bill and be behind in those three bills. No. God can meet your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Is this too much good news for you today? We can cut it back. I'm coming into a life of victory. Thank you. And no longer defeat. That's right. I'm coming in. <laughs> and affliction. I want you to say this with me. I'm coming in. Amen. So affliction. Sickness. sickness and, disease and disease. Have no place in me. Would you all stand?